We'll talk about the England Denmark game, but I don't know. She, obviously, the two years we're probably watching RT, given ITV is not available to a lot of the country. Uh, Didi Haman was in flying mm-hmm. form, and they had to cut him off. You think RT would get some sort of situation together that this is, you know, the biggest tournament we're covering for the next two years? Let's make sure that if it does go to extra time, that we're, we're not contractually obliged to show whatever was on next. I didn't even check. It was it was a rerun of Bridget and Eamon. Um Jesus. but the worst thing was Darren Maloney was like nearly apologising. He was like, "We want to stay on." We yeah. know we he, can stay he, he actually shut up the last three minutes. He said, "Let get as much content out there before we had to finish up." Ah, but, but, yeah. but in fairness to Didi, that God knows what he was on about. It was almost as if he was playing up to the crowd. It was almost as if people at home were going dead right, Didi. We'll get him. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him because he was just got. He was tired of crying basically, and like it was, it was, it wasn't a peno, but it wasn't as bad as like. I mean, he was saying you, basically the old. Uh, Nigel Clough line, isn't it? That you won it all by bloody cheating, basically. You know, he was this is not the spirit of the game. Like, there's no spirit of the game in football. I mean, footballers earn millions and millions of the euro every year by ghastly means. You know, you've got some of the biggest clubs in the world, PSG, who I'll have to talk about because I'm, I'm going to have a massive rant about PSG trying to change football. But, you know, state money from the likes of Qatar and UAE paying these footballers millions and millions of euro, and it's just and then Didi Haman started a European semi-final saying it's uh, it's not in the spirit of the game. After Raheem Sterling of Manchester City, who moved from Liverpool, a way bigger club than Man City in most people's eyes, for God knows 50 million to play for a club that's run by a state. And Didi Haman only sees the spirit of the game in a a little bit of simulation. I mean, it's people like it's that just point. need to get mm-hmm. they need to get off the off the fence. I was going to say off the fence, but need to get off their high horse, but. I must say, I thought Liam Brady was... Because you're just looking at Brady going... He's like... It's almost like... Not to use a dumb free thing, but he's like... He's a good guy. You know, he's... He's been around the block. Obviously an Irish legend. Yeah, but he's just... He just looks like someone you want to have a point with. And I thought he... uh, I thought he was funny. And then Kevin Doyle had a bit of a pop at him on Twitter. And uh, and then uh, I think he did a podcast. So it was a bit back and forth. But I have to say, when when you're looking at Brady, you're going... It just doesn't feel right. Even the way they're sitting, the way they're facing. I mean, this this is not the panel we grew up with, and I definitely think I definitely think that's a, a kind of it's Sean, but it, that's one of them. I mean, Didi Haman was, and and the thing about Richie, uh, and I I do like Richie Sadler at times, but I think he goes again. He's a bit like Didi sometimes. He just goes way too much down the the social injustice route, and yeah. and like giving out about UEFA and. Liam Brady made a great point. In fairness, like we're in a global pandemic, and the tournament has gone on relatively smoothly. There was a bit of COVID issues with the Spanish team before the tournament, Billy Gilmore. But UEFA, bearing in mind they kept going with this ridiculous plan to have games all around Europe, and the tournament's been a success. So you have to give them a bit of credit. And Richie was just going a little bit more down the, you know, these guys are ruining football, which everyone knows they are. But when it gets to a knockout stage of a major tournament, everyone puts the blinkers on, just wants to enjoy the football. So uh, it's a very interesting dynamic on RTE. And I actually, I've, I've kind of enjoyed the last couple of games. I didn't really enjoy it at the start. But I definitely think uh, when Darren Maloney's back in the hot seat, that uh, mm. there's a bit more order to her than uh, I have to. I just, I love Liam Brady. I mean, he's just one of the good guys. Yeah, well, Shane, your quick, quick thoughts on RT. I actually agree with Sean. I was going to make that point before he said it there that it, towards the end, they've kind of got their act together a bit too late, I thought, because it was it was almost a, it was a bit of a, a disaster really watching games on RT. And every time it was on BBC, I chose BBC, which never, Sean knows this, never would have happened before. Like. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, 100%. I feel like I kind of, not, not that I can't contribute to this conversation, but I genuinely would, would have watched most of the games on BBC or ITV. That's th- this year, really, for that tournament. I mean, I've, I haven't watched much on RT. Like, I, I don't know. It's just not the same. The, some of the coverage is just, like Kevin Doyle. I can't. I can't really deal with Kevin Doyle like that. I'm not, well, not just him. just on your she just to cut across you, Kevin Doyle. He's in an interview, maybe going back a year or two, saying he doesn't watch much football anymore. Yeah, and all of a sudden I mean, he got a job in RT. Like that doesn't surprise know. me in the slightest. Watching, listen to him speak, Duff. I I'm I'm hit hit or miss on Duff. I used to think I was like oh, Duff's great. Duff's great, and then he, I think he's become kind of becoming a slightly bit of a soundbitey. Kind of thing recently, I know he was saying the stuff about I oh, 
I'm no Denmark better than I know my wife or something he said the other day or some kind of line like that and you're kind of like yeah. oh, that's a bit not, that's that's kind of funny, he, but like, he did he did his two year um what's he called a Sean like the equivalent the of a thesis is, in, yeah, yeah, yeah on, on Denmark the course, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then they don't but, put him on the, the England Denmark semi final yeah, yeah I just mean? <laughs> un, unusual I thought that was unusual but uh, no I think uh, as I said mostly I actually have generally mostly watching it on BBC um just because I. TRT coverage was doing nothing for me, but um, Brady, I'd agree with Brady. Yeah, I think but Brady's a nice guy. He has some bad takes. He still has some bad takes, but you kind of have to. He's one of those like in the in the the, the Dunphy mold or the yeah. kind of all star mold where like you just you know I mean you're never gonna slay me like Giles as well. Like you're not really gonna slay him. You know what I mean? He's such a legend. Like um, whereas I feel much easier slating Kevin Doyle. Like Brady might say something way worse than Doyle, but I'd be like Doyle, ah, yeah, yeah. idiot. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, but I say I'll bring back the old panel. That's what I say. Bring back the yeah. old. Bring back the, know, the old trio. I know Liam Brady. He was. He, he said something like I haven't done much study on on this team. It was early on in the tournament, and they went to an ad break and they came back and Liam Brady had about five sheets in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of went, "No, you can't do this, Liam anymore." <laughs> and on Italy games, he'd always bring up Marco Tardelli, like which is yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I have to. I I, agree. I think RT have massively kind. Of, they've kind of found the thing. I think there was too much chopping and changing with different presenters and. I even go back to to the Ireland. Um, who did we beat? That was it. Andorra. Uh, who did we, Andorra did we beat? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, yeah. And uh, Ke- uh, Peter Collins and Richie Sadler had a bit of a to and fro about whether it was a good win and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was just a bit weird. But I have to say, I really like Damien Duff. I just think he's, do you know, he's one of the only pundits there that I kind of enjoy. Now I know what you mean, Ocean, and a dead, a deadly agree with you he is a bit sound by the point i think that's what you want especially for those major tournaments that you you wouldn't want to be listening to duffer every week on a monday night football or something or but he is very, he's quite in tune with the coaching game and i do think he'll actually make a really good coach and i think he's back in with with pats or someone in in, in the underage leagues um but i have to say i really enjoy it i just i think he doesn't take himself overly serious when he's uh when he's on punditry and i do think that's probably one of the keys to uh being a great pundit, but I have to say I do. Liam Brady, you just even when he, even when he's talking and he'll say something and he'll, he'll say something, they go Dara, you know, and you're just this guy. This guy should be, he should be saying Bill. He should. Yeah, you, you always get the feeling he's about to say Bill. He's about yeah. to say he has to check himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah John yeah, Giles kept doing that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it is because there's one for you on Friday or uh, Thursday, last Thursday night, um, or the Monday night. Obviously, John Giles still works for News Talk, and he was doing it his piece with Joe Malloy that night, and he was just brilliant, John Giles. It was like because I had him on the radio in the car, and I was driving to training, and I was just listening to him going, "God, you miss, you miss John Giles." Because even like, even though maybe John Giles, who by the sounds of still watches an awful amount of football with some of the things he was saying, but it's just like refreshing to hear the same thing they used to hear when you were growing up about. John Giles loves the way how someone receives a ball and how he arches his body and all this. And he was talking about your man Verratti for Italy. And, but I have to say, RT, it's it's not what it once was, but you could imagine the panel, the original panel with England, Italy in a final and Dunphy and them having a pop at, at one of them having a go at Sterling for Dive and another one saying it's it's different. But uh, I have to say, in fairness, I, I would have said RT's um, has up their game recently, which is obviously important because it's got to the knockout stage yeah no what she you know john giles always brings it back to don revy when he's talking i always have a little mm-hmm. smile like yeah, how long he went yeah like, say the line john say don revy <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's like yeah, yeah. Needs, uh, I know, a legend, yeah. 